Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to a new episode of Family Issues. Dear brothers and sisters, as we've been doing in the past episodes here in the program, uh, we've been waiting for your suggestions uh, and you uh, have been the ones choosing the topics here and uh, we are continuing um, in this frame and the topic that you chose is uh, how to get our kids ready uh, for the exams as we are in uh, um, uh, uh, t test or exam uh, uh, periods uh, at the moment in, uh, um, uh, here in the Middle East and in many um, areas uh, um, uh, and regions uh, around the globe. Uh, how to prepare uh, our kids, our children uh, for the exams, uh, what is the best way uh, um, to motivate them uh, psychologically um, uh, while at the same time not pressure them uh, uh, too much. Uh, what do uh, exams really uh, represent? Uh, uh, um, are they really uh, uh, the, the main criteria behind uh, a kid's uh, um, uh, uh, intelligence, um, uh, the tips uh, before the uh, exams, uh, uh, and uh, what also uh, programs uh, uh, should we uh, uh, um, pre pre prepare ourselves with uh, as uh, our children get into exam period. Uh, we do thank you for watching us and we do remind you that we'll be uh, ready to receive your phone calls and your emails uh, uh, live here in the uh, program. The uh, numbers uh, um, uh, uh, are on the screen right now, the phone numbers. You can also uh, contact us uh, via um, email and via our Facebook uh, um, account. And we are very glad uh, to have uh, with us here in this episode uh, a teacher, as you might have guessed, uh, and uh, he is Brother Abdul Salam Abdul Khabir, a teacher uh, of um, English, uh, Math, uh, and Science, uh, um, uh, uh, a class teacher at an Islamic school uh, here in Egypt, and uh, he is uh, um, a Muslim uh, from uh, Chicago, from uh, the U.S. Uh, Brother Abdul Salam, Salamu alaikum. Thank you for joining us here in the program. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. It's a pleasure to be here. Actually. Thank you, brother. Jazakumullah khairan. Uh, you must be uh, preparing exams uh, at the moment for yes. your uh, students. <laughs> so let, let's start by, by, by you. Let's start by, by the teacher. What does exam period uh, uh, um, uh, mean for, for a teacher? How do you uh, get yourself ready to, to write an exam and uh, um, how do you do it? Well, you know, we just really base it off of the lessons that we taught them all quarter, you know. So we've been teaching them all quarter uh, from our curriculum. And then we just get those lessons and we look at the really important parts of that lesson, the main part of the lessons, and then we just try to combine it in a way that is very beneficial for the child. And that will give us an idea of um, the level of that child hmm. because you know it's a test so it's it's not going to tell you everything that they're thinking um, and um, it's just something to give us an indicator of you know what level uh, the child uh, is at you know right uh, you t you teach uh, um, grade one yeah, uh, correct, and, <laughs> and that must be difficult. Uh, yes, and sometimes age. you know, beautiful age, but well, a difficult a good, one to teach because I they're guess. all they're inquiring and they're mm. they're interested in pretty much everything, and they oh, why is this and why is that, and they have so much energy, you know, mm. they have so much energy. Alhamdulillah, mashallah. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's good. So you kind of direct them, and it's you know, I feel it's uh, very rewarding, you know, because. The ideas uh, that you're teaching them and the, the principles uh, that you're attempting to instill in them, inshallah, it will be the foundation uh, for many things in, uh, in their lives, you know. Mm -hmm. You never know, one of your students can end up being, uh, doing great things and helping many people, you know. Mm -hmm. And to think, you know, that uh, inshallah, you, uh, 
to contribute to you know some something good in this individual and the individual students is alhamdulillah it's beautiful Indeed. Uh, now, getting um, a, a kid ready for, for exams uh, uh, is the responsibility of, of the school and uh, the family um, as well. Um, uh, how is the responsibility shared between the school and, uh, and home? Yeah, see, we have this thing, actually, in our school. We call it the Golden Triangle. Okay, so you have the student, mm. and then you have the parent, and you have the school, and this relationship is very important. If one uh, falls off, then it means less uh, for the child. So you have to communicate uh, with the parents and let them know the lessons, and then when the parent, you know, gets their child. Uh, and they pick them up, take them home and everything, then they have to, okay, what did you study? And they have to help them with their homework and help them prepare. And then they bring them right back to school, and then we communicate with the child. So it's a communication between all three parties. And this is really important. You find that the, um, the parents who are more interested in their child when they call, and, okay, well, he didn't quite get this yesterday, and... Uh, can you help him out with this? And I felt that he was weak on this. I was helping him with his homework, and those kids are the ones who do the best. Mm. They're the ones who uh, do the best in the exams, actually. Yeah. Mm. Now, um, obviously, there are some parents who uh, follow up with their kids at home yeah. regularly, um, and uh, others let that responsibility uh, uh, um, uh, um, uh, f uh, on the school or the uh, child uh, himself or herself because they want him or her to be responsible. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in, in your view, what is the best method? Well, it depends on, I mean, you, you always should encourage your child. And then it also depends on the age of your child. You know, if you have a six-year-old, he's not going to eat. Right. He's not going to know what his homework is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he's going to go home and, you know, so we, you know, if, he, if we don't write it in the book, yeah. okay, this is what he's studying today, this is what he mm. needs to bring tomorrow, then, you know, he doesn't really care. <laughs> right. Okay, he just wants to play soccer and eat and have fun. So I think that the parent really needs to be there. What is your homework? Uh, what did you do in class? Okay, let's see what, you, you know, open this book. Okay, read this. And they have to be the coach at home. It's so important for the younger ones. Now, once you get uh, into the higher grades, um, and when you get into, you know, grade six, grade seven even, mm. um, then, you know, you should say, okay, did you do your homework? You know, how come you're not doing your homework? Come on, you know, walk by, the t you walk by, you see him watching TV. Mm. Hey, wait, did you do your homework? You know, mm. but they know just where to go. They know just what they're supposed to be doing. So it's not, mm. you know, it's not the same. Right. What, what about in, in between? I mean, the and, four and five. it's a spectrum yeah. <laughs> from this, uh, you know, the first grade to the higher grades. And it's mm -hmm. and the the more they go, you know, the they advance. The more they advance, the less you have to. Uh, I guess you know, baby them because you know they, you know. But no, you still no, have to no, watch obviously. Them. But what 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 do you do with a a, um, a grade four or five or six student? I mean, do you let let him or her, uh, you know, take the responsibility and and get the punishment because he or she didn't do the homework, or do you follow up? Oh, you got to follow up, mm -hmm. and um, you must. I, I I strongly encourage the parents to, you know, be there. Uh, with their child because at home this is so important you know and you know the ones you know who work with the child and and uh, the ones who didn't and sometimes you know the parent or the parents they, they might be busy and they might they might both have to work what if they both have to work they come home tired but do what they can you know ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to strengthen them and uh and help them in raising their child, give them the energy to just, you know, sit with them, even if it's for 15 minutes, even uh, uh, 10 minutes, what are you doing? Um, you know, let me see, you know, did you do your homework? You know, just even ask those questions. Mm -hmm. uh, inshallah, and inshallah, they'll, you know, when they see the care and the dedication from their parents' side mm -hmm. and, and from the school, and then they, they, you know... They will realize how important yeah, this is. Yeah, they... they 
They do most of the time, yeah. Indeed. N now, from your experience, uh, we know that there are schools who, uh, where kids stay up late, so they don't uh, usually, th they could do their homeworks, uh, uh, it's not a homework then, it's a, it's a schoolwork, I guess. They could do the, um, uh, um, uh, everything um, um, they were assigned to at school, um, others take private lessons in the afternoon, yeah. and others have their parents helping them. Yeah. A father or a mother who is brilliant, for instance, in math or uh. good in, at English or uh, uh, um, understands physics uh, and so on. From your experience, uh, um, uh, which um, you know way usually gives us the um, the br the the, uh, the most uh, efficient. Uh, uh, academic students well you know there's no like cookie cutter you know way to just say okay this is the best way it's whatever works for the student you know um, the parents um, you know you might have the you know parents who care and say okay well I'm gonna get an after-school program for my child I've seen some I've seen some parents they um, they get a tutor for the child and they say okay well he's learning this and that okay I'll get a tutor and then some parents they have the time and say okay I'm going to tutor my child you know um, so I think it's the, um, the caring if the parent cares they'll find a way to navigate and, and make sure the child is doing their what they're supposed to be doing to achieve those good grades and to more than I mean the grades just reflect their intellect mm. so that they understand I often see a um, a trend of just memorizing, mm. memorizing what they're going to have on the test and memorizing. But I like to challenge the students, even the young ones, um, to think critically. Why? Uh, okay, so if and I give them scenarios. What can we do today to save energy? We were going, me and my students, we were going over um, uh, conservation and conserving energy. And I said, okay, so what can we do right now? And they start thinking, oh, this is not on a test. You didn't write this down. Hmm. No, but what can we do? Yeah, you just learn this. And, right, and, start and, to and think. sometimes you, you'll, you'll hear beautiful ideas. Yeah, they really start to think, mashallah. And yeah, they come up with stuff. Oh, we can turn off the lights, and then we can open the curtain and let the sun shine in, and so yeah. on, you know? So yeah. they start to use this information, you know, just thinking mm. differently outside of the box, you mm. know? Now, yeah. you've said, uh, uh, Brother Abdul Salam, more than once that um, um, the uh, grades uh, the, um, uh, the kids get is just an indicator of yeah. their um, intellect. So, uh, uh, what other um, uh, uh, ways can uh, we measure their, their intellect? Yeah, this, I think the testing is the best way, mm. actually. But also, observation and... Um, I believe that each child, each person has a gift, you know? And then you watch them over time and you try to find out what that gift is. This child may not be so good in math, but they're excellent in English and vice versa. Or you might have a child who can't read very well, but uh, in computers, mashallah. Um, so I think the parents should look for the gift in their child. Uh, you might, some parents might say, oh, well, my child is not really that smart. But if you watch, you may see, ah, this is what this child is gifted with. So that's, I mean, I often find that in my students. You, when you, the first glance, you say, oh, this student is just a mediocre student or something like that. But over the quarter, you watch their behavior. You watch them, oh, look at, look at him. Look at how he's, you know, he's so attentive to computers. Mm. And he's, you know, like this. And you're like, wow, mashallah, it's, you see each child they have something special. They have a gift. Subhanallah. And uh, you have to so, watch. So them. once I've spotted that uh, gift, do I focus on it or do I try to uh, um, find ways to improve uh, 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 his or her level uh, in different subjects so as to balance uh, um, things out and to make sure that you have a, a cocktail of, uh, uh, of knowledge? Yeah, definitely. I would, you know, once you find that gift out, find out what their... Um, they're doing that's exceptional, you know, that's more than the average person or something that they, they like and they're good at. 
and then um, you definitely nurture it. You put these things in their environment to help them. If you have a kid who likes, if he likes computers, then you put, you know, make sure he has one available, inshallah, if you can afford it, inshallah. Um, and then you uh, give him extra little things. You don't force him down that road. You just put those things in his environment, and inshallah, he will naturally, or he or she will naturally gravitate to that which they are good at. Mm. And uh, over, I remember my mother doing that uh, with uh, um, myself, my brothers and my sisters and myself. The things that we were good at, she would just put these things in our environment. Mm. And then over the years, uh, mashallah, you see development, uh, special skills, develops in these areas and it's you know, mashallah they, they really they really blossom they they really bloom mashallah uh, right um uh, now back to refocusing on how, how to get um, uh, kids ready for um, exam time yeah um sometimes uh, uh, some parents pressure kids too much at an early age they want their kids to to to, to get the highest grades but uh, uh, um, they do it in, in a manner that, that makes uh, a life uh, at home uh, like a, a prison. <laughs> and uh, uh, others uh, are so aware of that point, they relax uh, so much that they leave things uh, um, you know, up for grabs. So uh, uh, how do we approach this? And, and is there f uh, uh, specifically a, a, um, uh, a certain time uh, um, w where kids have to study, meaning an hour per day, two hours per day, uh, increase that uh, time before exams. What do we do about that? Yeah, I see what you're saying. Like some parents, they may be too strict and put, they put too much pressure. And on the other hand, you have others who, you know, they're too lax, right? So the middle ground, right, is the best. The middle way is the best way, right? So um, uh, I would encourage the parents to motivate their children in more than one way. You have to have a set program. Um, when you come home, you study. And not just for the testing, but you come home, you study, you do this, you have a program for them. Because children, they really respond to a structure, right? Mm. Um, so and th there could be a constructive routine. Yeah, there should mm. be. Mm. You know, every day, not only for mm. exams. But then you tell them, hey, okay, I'll give you... Uh, you know, a present. <laughs> if you if if you do well on your exams, you know you can, uh, you know, have a dish party or get that new uh, video game that you wanted to get, or something like that. You um you motivate them with positive positive motivation as well, and at the same time, make sure that they do their homework and they stick to their program and uh, fulfill all of the homework obligations that they have to. Right. Uh, um, uh, I think we have uh, uh, a phone call now. Uh, 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 Brother Abdul Salam, uh, 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 live with us is uh, Mr. Uh, Brother Mustafa Moor, and he's calling us from the U.S., correct? Brother Mustafa, right. go, go ahead. Salam alaikum. Thank you. Thank you for watching us. Go ahead, brother. Naam, naam. Well, I'd like to say salam alaikum to the audience. Um, and, and all of you guests, Jazak Allah Khair for accepting my call. Jazak um, Allah Khair. Nah, um, this is a tough time for the children, but it's not an impossible time. Uh, but they have to come up with a schedule for themselves, something that's suitable, um, something that, if possible, maybe uh, them and their parents can sit down and make it together. But, but make sure that they're a part of it so, so that it won't be something like uh, tyranny. You know, we don't want the, the parents to, you know, to dictate the whole thing. We want the children to have a part in it. And um, you know, uh, let them sit together and come up with a good schedule. And, um, and the, 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 the best thing that the parent could do is to sit with the child. And, and uh, I mean, even if they don't do too much, just show the child that they're being supportive and, you know, that they're there for them. You know, Beautiful. and uh, and uh, I mean, you know, these child, these, these children, they have to stop being so lazy. You know, uh, you know, it's not a, 
you know, th- th- this is one of the bigger problems, you know. The, yes. They, they, they think that, you know, everything is just given to them and they get an automatic A, you know, but no, mm-hmm. you you have to work for it, mm-hmm. you know. Like the, the Prophet Ali Salam oh, says, uh, you know, we, we tie our camels and then to walk along Allah. Mm-hmm. So it's not just, you know, or oh, anything goes, no. You have to tie your camel and, and then to walk along the line. Yeah. And, uh, you know, may, may Allah um, be kind with these children and help them mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. On, on, with their exams and, mm-hmm. um, you, you know, know, you know, brother, thank you. Not <laughs> thank you very mm-hmm. much, uh, brother uh, Mustafa uh, Moore uh, from the U.S., I, I mean, for your uh, um, beautiful uh, comments here. I think very, very important yeah. uh, uh, um, uh, advice there. The parents have to, to let the children also uh, uh, take part in, uh, uh, in decision making and yeah. in, 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 in arranging schedules for exams. And, uh, um, but, but at the same time, let them be, uh, let them feel responsible. Yeah. So. Yeah, and uh, mashallah, the brother had a very good point. Um, you know, Kids are kids, and it's the parents' responsibility to make sure that they, or give them the best chance that they can um, to be uh, successful academically, inshallah. So, like the brother said, you know, you do have to be serious. You know, not too serious, don't make life too difficult, you know, but you must be serious. We must be serious with the children and show that we are seriously concerned and that, you know, they can't be lazy, they have to do their work. Um, you, when you look at people who are uh, successful academically through history, you see that they had someone in their lives, hey, you know, if you get a bad grade, you, you, you're on punishment. Okay? You can't go out and play, you know, you can't do these things. Mm. If you're capable, if you're capable of getting that good grade, right. you know, then you must do your best, you know. Mm. You, you must instill in these children mm. to do their best. And then after that, mm. you make dua. Right. You, you make supplication to Allah subhanahu mm-hmm. wa ta'ala and ask Allah to help. But mm-hmm. like the brother said, tie your camel. Let them know, hey, you must do your work. Uh, let them know that, you know, this is serious. Th- that yeah. leads to, to many fights, though. I, I mean, <laughs> you must be aware. Um, and, uh, you know, a parent is uh, uh, many times stuck between, you know, feeling the responsibility of, you know, having to guide his or uh, uh, her child to, uh, to 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 success as much as he or she knows, uh, but at the same time, they w- they don't want you know uh, uh, um, th- the kids to be uh, um, to hate them they for, for they this yeah. and hate math so and they hate all the uh, right. social studies exactly and and and, and, uh, and you have kids who are so uh, energetic that they just don't want to sit yeah uh, I mean they they study for fifteen or thirty minutes maximum. And then they, they take a 10-minute break that get, gets into two hours. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you have to shout. And yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, parenting is not an easy job. And at the same time, it can be a very fun job, too, because, like, again, I teach, you know, six-year-olds. You know, they're, they're six- and seven-year-olds. So you have to be creative. If you think they're just going to sit there and write on a piece of paper, this is a dream. This is a not realistic, right? So you have to, you know, take them out in the garden, and you teach. You, I'm teaching them force, you know, uh, on one of the lessons. So I get a ball, and then I, you know, I throw it at them and I say, "Catch it!" That was a slow speed. That was a fast speed. And you, you know, because there are different learners. So you have to take them, you, you know, outside, take them out of the little shell, still teach them, but you know, do something that's fun too. Mm. And then at the same time, bring it right back around mm. uh, to that paper <laughs> mm. again. And so you, you know, you vary the lessons and you don't have to just, you know, mm. just strict regiment like this. You do have to have things structured, but you can go outside the box. You can have fun, you know. Right. Uh, Brother Absalem, we have with us uh, another call. And it is Brother Shauket from Nigeria. Mm. Jauda from Nigeria. Assalamu alaikum, brother. Thank you for calling us. Go ahead. Alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I really appreciate the. Thank you, brother. Barakallahu alaikum, brother. 
and I think we should keep it. I'm so sorry for that. Mm. I, I think we... Uh, uh, the the phone line was disconnected. We thank you very much, uh, Brother Joda, uh, from mm -hmm. Nigeria, f for your phone call. And we're, we're going to be discussing more about that issue that, that you chose, dear brothers and sisters, <laughs> uh, our dear viewers, uh, 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 for this uh, episode. We'll be back with the Brother Abdul Salam Abdul Khabir, uh, um, uh, class teacher here at an Islamic school uh, in Egypt. After this uh, short break, brother, dear brothers and sisters, so please do. Uh, um, stay uh, with us. Salam alaikum. I, I really like the uh, the example he gives in that clip yeah. um, about the guy stuck in traffic. <laughs> you know, he thinks that mm. it's just it, it takes it personal, yeah. um, which which you know brings us to the point that a pessimist. Is, is very subjective uh, when it comes to negative things that happens in Islam. But for example, if you are talking to me about um, doing something good in life and you are on the, the bed of death and you want to do something for your ummah, this is why we did this program, to make you get your achievable goals before you reach the moment that you will not be able to achieve anything. SubhanAllah, if I may add. If I have a positive attitude, and if I have courage, why it doesn't appear in all the problems that I face? Why it doesn't appear in all what I do in my life? Actually, because you are not responsible enough to control your mindset. I was reading a study on the New York government. Mm. They wanted to improve um, the crime rate. They wanted to lower the crime rate ultimately and they found that in the subways there was a lot of graffiti, a lot of trash mm. and just by doing a little thing like removing the trash and removing the graffiti and making a more clean environment the crime rate actually lowered. So this shows the power that how little things can really make a big difference. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back. Um, Brother Abdul Salam, uh, uh, what uh, 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 is the atmosphere that we should provide at home uh, for um, uh, you know kids to get ready for exams, especially when you have uh, uh, brothers and sisters and so on, uh, younger ones who are running around all, uh, uh, and you know sometimes it's difficult to concentrate for yeah. for the child. I mean, is there a specific area where, where the child should be studying? Uh, 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 and uh, uh, how do we get that fixed? And we don't want him or her also to, to get bored. I mean, we don't want to close the door and, and, and you know lock the key and so on. So, how do we the scene and, yeah. and the atmosphere? It should, inshallah, if you can manage. You know, if you have small children, sometimes it's difficult. But inshallah, if you can manage to have a quiet place, you know. Uh, you know, a quiet place, very bright light, you know, a brightly lighted place. And, um, uh, you know, have the, all of the study materials there, have all the things that they need there, you know. And comfortable, a comfortable place for them to sit and study. And um, not only the physical atmosphere, but create a, me a mental atmosphere of, okay, this is the time. It's time to study. It's time to learn. We're in test time now. This is an important time. It's not a long time. We might only have a, you know, a week or you know, two to really get everything together. But and then afterward, we'll be relaxed and go into summer, inshallah. Mm -hmm. So you create that atmosphere for them mentally and physically and spiritually. You know, mm -hmm. you make uh, dua. You make mm -hmm. prayer with them after, mm -hmm. you know, um, mm. you, you sit down with them and make prayer with them and supplicate with them, mm. and um, so you create. And uh, you're teaching system. them a, a very important principle there. Uh, again, the uh, the issue of you have to do your best, uh, yeah. and, and and then pray uh, to Allah the Almighty that you'll be successful. And it's, it just teaches the children at a very early age that everything is in the hands of Allah. Yes. But, but at the same time, Allah has ordered us that you have to do your best. Yeah, yeah, we. Yeah. 
Yeah, this is a very important point. Mm -hmm. You can say, oh, inshallah, I'm mm -hmm. going to play. <laughs> I'll do good, inshallah. Allah's kind. <laughs> He'll bestow on me you yeah. know, all, everything I need. I'm going to go play soccer. And, you know, yeah. no, no. We have to, you know, do both. And inshallah, you know, this principle, inshallah, uh, they will teach to their family and their kids. This, mm -hmm. um, so it's a very important thing to show them the care and to show them the interest in right. you know, academia. Brother Abdul Salam, uh, brothers and sisters, we have with us now uh, Dr. Mahmoud ad dinawi uh, a professor uh, at Al-Azhar University, lecturer uh, uh, of Islamic Studies. Thank you very much, Dr. Dinawi. Uh, Jazakumullah khairan uh, uh, for uh, joining us here. Uh, and we're talking about getting our uh, kids ready for exam uh, uh, time. Uh, your advice, um, how to get them uh, psychologically uh, um, and academically uh, ready, uh, Dr. Dinewi. Yeah, Jazakallah khair, Brother Muhammad, and first of all, Assalamu alaikum, and uh, welcome, alaykum to, alaykum welcome alaykum to your alaykum wonderful alaykum guest. Alaykum. And, uh, alaykum. Actually, we know that most homes nowadays having exams and having some uh, little bit headache in a way to. To, but the best thing to to make our children have this, uh, first of all, we have to prepare the good environment for them, right? Like parents and fathers and mothers should do their best to uh, prepare a good environment for them, to help them, to uh, teach them how to study and to always uh, remind them that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raised the status of scholars, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raised the status of knowledge, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said in the hadith, the one who seeks knowledge, he will be blessed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Angels, even whales, as the hadith says, uh, are asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive the one who is seeking knowledge and the one who is on the way of being a scholar in the way. So, uh, also, children or students, uh, they should have a good sleep in order to be able to concentrate. Mm. Mm. And they also should avoid anything that would disturb them, like music or whatever. We just need to focus. Mm -hmm. Whenever we are focusing on our studies and we are doing our best, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will facilitate the way and will give us more success as he says in the Quran. Inna we will never let those who work hard, their work or their uh, uh, efforts will go in vain. Mm -hmm. Barakallahu feekum, Dr. Uh, uh, Dinawi, uh, and mentioning a very important point there uh, about sleeping time. I have yeah. a, a follow-up question, Dr. Dinawi, if you are uh, still uh, with us, uh, um, uh, and I'm going to pose that to you as well, uh, Brother Abdul Salam, because I think it's, uh, uh, it's something that we all pass through. Now you have your kid uh, uh, um, uh, who hasn't studied all uh, uh, what he has to, uh, but he needs to sleep. Uh, you know that he hasn't finished revision, uh, but uh, so you have that one or two extra hours and you don't know whether it's better for him or her to sleep or to continue to revise what he or she, what you know that he or she is still um, missing. Uh, uh, so what do we do in that case? So it's, it's better in a way, as, uh, as we always say in, in your very nice program, and we need to teach them the son of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Prophet said, Allah bless those who wake up early and it was the habit of the companions and the, the, the bias people sorry, to sleep early and wake up early. I can't let children, for example, go until midnight or maybe more than this. So they will wake up again tired and they will not be able to study. So, and also everything when we have a kind of plan, if we have a good right. plan for our studies, definitely we are going to have, inshallah, full success. Indeed. Mm -hmm. Barakallahu feekum, Dr. Mahmoud uh, Adenawi, uh, uh, professor uh, um, uh, uh, at Al-Azhar University, lecturer of Islamic studies. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. The same question, Brother Abdul Salam. We know that we shouldn't reach that stage, uh, but this is what happens a lot, especially with uh, older kids. I mean, uh, uh, maybe grade sevens, eights, mm -hmm. nines. Uh, y you know that they might be missing something uh, 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 because they were absent in, in, uh, in some uh, uh, school days or something that they didn't really grasp or understand very well. So you're just working on it so as to make sure that they do before they go to exam time. Mm -hmm. Maybe they play too much and they want to catch up with, uh, um, you know, uh, with what they've missed. So how do you make that um, uh, um, decision? Do you let them go and sleep? Because, I mean, obviously if you don't have enough sleep, you could mess uh, uh, up even in, in, in things yeah. that you know very well. 
But if you don't revise that one or two uh, chapters, uh, and then the exam, 25% of the exam comes here, you, you could really lose your grades. Yeah. So what do we do in that case? Um, well, mashallah, like the brother said, um, like the professor said, you know, the, to wake up early, okay, and to go to sleep early. So in, in that case, I would recommend that, um, I would recommend, you know, let them go to sleep because after a certain amount of time, if you're really sleepy and you need sleep, your brain is not going to function. Work. Anything, <laughs> it's yeah. not going to function correctly. Mm. You're going to be wasting your time. Oh, correct. And wake up earlier than usual. Mm. Maybe they can go to sleep. Okay. Then after Fajr, okay, be sure don't sleep. <laughs> okay. Mm. Read some Quran and then after Quran, let's catch up on that extra homework that mm. you missed, you mm. know. Mm. Uh, and then your brain has, you know, relaxed and it's gotten its rest and it's rejuvenated and replenished mm. inshallah um, and then I think they'll be better so yeah mm. go to sleep and wake up or wake up early and do mm. it uh, although from from experience but maybe this is with uh, that could be applicable I think to university students more. yeah that if, if, if you study yeah different. if you study something and sleep on it it, it, it usually uh, um, you know uh, the, the saving in, in the uh, um, in, a, in our brains, about it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So the the storage is is yeah. usually more efficient than if you study it, you know, just two or three hours before the exam. Oh. If you sleep oh, on no. it just for one day, <laughs> no, no, you they must. <laughs> yeah, no, have them study before they go to sleep. Yeah, <laughs> study when they wake up. <laughs> you exactly. know, study, study, study. You know yeah. what I mean? Uh, it, yes. It, but but not at the expense of uh, of sleeping time. I, I know this is controversial and this is difficult, little but, little, but, but it does yeah. happen a lot. Yeah. So what do we sacrifice? Do we sacrifice an hour of sleep, or do we sacrifice uh, some information in in some chapter or two? Yeah, I mean, like if you have a six year old, you know, you're going to study till midnight, Mister. No, 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 <laughs> no, 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 I'm joking. I'm talking no, about yeah, a, you're the older, eleven, twelve, thirteen. I think the older that the you know a person gets, the more tolerant they you know they are to staying up later. But uh, the ideal hours, I think, to study is uh, in the morning. In the morning. And really, if you really want to study well, you get up in the night. You go to sleep early. You know, you go to sleep uh, after Isha. Then you wake up in the night. You mm. know, you do some praying and then you do some studying. You can wake up. Well, actually, right now here, Fajr is like around 3. Yeah, correct. <laughs> three, 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 close to 3.30. Mm. But, you know, wake up around this time. Actually, it's closer before, to 3 a.m. Yeah. yeah, I know. It's just, you know, mashallah, it's mm. moving. But you wake up before Fajr. Mm. I mean, and the older that they, the older that they get, mm. they should, well, we should get, you know, because I don't do it all the time either. Mm. You know, make dua for me that I wake up amen, <laughs> in amen. the night and pray. But you wake up and then really study more. Mm. Mm. Uh, these, these times are beautiful. Everyone sleep. It's very quiet. You have mm. your concentration after your prayer. And if you read something, there's nothing else to do. Mm. So you can just, you can really focus on your studies. And these are for the older students, mm. um, you know, who's finishing up that high school and they're uh, moving, you know, getting closer well, to college. What are the common mistakes, uh, 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 Brother Abdusalam, that you see your students doing uh, in exams? I mean, most of the, the grades they lose in your view, is it because they were not concentrating enough during exam time? Is it because they didn't study enough at home? Is it because they didn't understand the principles and 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 never, uh, and their parents were not aware of of that fact? I mean, what are the com um, main reasons behind low grades? Um, okay, you have different uh, people, different achievers. You know, you have some people who I mean, they have an and uh, they're naturally good at certain things. Um, and that's from Allah. SubhanAllah. Okay. You, can, you can, if you have someone who's weak in an area, you can help them, you can strengthen them. Uh, um, but that's one thing. But when you talk about uh, someone who has the ability to, uh, and they're not um, uh, achieving like they're supposed to be achieving, uh, there are various factors, I believe, that contribute to this. Uh, one, uh, they, they're not serious. Children don't want to do homework. Okay, bottom line. You, you have exceptions, but for the most part, they don't want to study. So the seriousness lies in the parents. This is where the seriousness comes from, and you have to instill that into the child. So um, they don't want to study. They're, you know, 
they want the good grade, but they don't want to study. Mm. So I think the first thing I see is lack of seriousness. Mm. And I mean, they're children. You don't expect them to be, mm. but it has to be communicated from the parent that this is serious. Mm. Um, secondly, um, uh, honestly, I think it's people with different aptitudes. I mean, mm. um, you have people who their people are at different levels, mm. and you and you kind of watch a child and you see. So how sometimes they you feel that is, that a student. But, but bef before I ask that, uh, uh, sorry, uh, allow me to take in uh, a dear caller. Okay. Uh, um, uh, we have with us brother Muhammad uh, from Saudi Arabia. Assalamu alaikum, brother. Thank you for calling us. And go ahead. Wa alaikum assalam. Yes, you are on air. Yeah, okay. um, uh, my question is, um, I'm living in Saudi Arabia. Uh, my kids are studying in Saudi Arabic uh, medium, Saudi, uh, Saudi syllabus. Uh, in the Saudi syllabus, uh, they, for the, kin the kindergarten and the primary up to grade grade four, they don't have any exams like any other international school. Mm. So this uh, education system is Sharia-based, like they have uh, Quran, Tafid, and uh, mm. Kedah. Mm. So many subjects in addition to the uh, regular uh, science and mathematics, English subjects. Yes. So do you think uh, like this uh, kids up to grade 4, uh, do they need to have an exam? Like, uh, because they have a, a assessment at end of the year, mm. but they don't have exams like in other, other, other international schools. Yes. Well, what, what do you think about this? Thank you very much, Brother Muhammad. Mm. Uh, Brother Abdesalam would be answering you. Interesting. Um, yeah. yeah, that is interesting. Mm. And I know in other countries, mm. I, I've heard that, yeah. you know... It's an, there is an assessment, but there is no exam. Yeah, yeah, I've, yeah. I've heard it's in, in yes. other countries, they have a similar type of system. Mm. And like I said, I think, you know, the exam is just, especially for the younger ones, you know, it's something to kind of get an idea, like the assessment. Mm. Mm. But it really doesn't, you know, um, tell you everything right. about them. It doesn't tell you how intelligent they are. You know, yeah, I, I, mean, I, I mean, for grade two, for instance, I mean, what what does it tell you that if this kid got 18 out of 20 and that kid 16 and a half? I mean, yeah. how can, yeah, sometimes it, you just get that, yeah. Yeah, thought, yeah, I mean, yeah. that's just how it is sometimes. What, it, but if somebody it, gets five out of 20, then you know that, that there is a Yeah, there is an issue yeah. there. Mm. Um, mm. It, it gives them practice. Mm. You know, grade one, grade two, mm. it gives them practice really on... Um, how to take exams, how to study. Um, mm. But if they're studying every day and you're with them and they're doing little quizzes and they're doing their work in their book, then you can you get a kind of an idea of where they are. Mm. You know, and the exam, you know, it's just, you know, one or two weeks or so. Mm. So they're not going to just immediately, you know, become super intelligent in that time. It's a gradual process anyway. Mm. So the exams are important, but for the younger ones, I don't think it's super important. Yeah, so, so you don't see a problem there. No, uh, uh, no. Yeah. As long as they're learning, mm. that's important, that they're taking in the knowledge that they're comprehending. And, and I guess that parents can assess yeah. where, uh, whether their kids are, are, are at, a, at this very young age or learning or not. I yeah, mean, yeah. it's easy for, for parents. They yeah. don't have to be geniuses in algebra or uh, no, uh, no, no, physics no. Uh, no. Or, yeah, or, or, or um, literature to, to know. Just talk to them. Yeah. What did you study today? Oh, I study about this. Just talk to them. You're going to know <laughs> if they're getting it or if they're not getting it. Right. You, can have, you can have a little conversation with them and yeah. talk about the subject. What did you study? Oh, uh, 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 oh. Yeah. Uh, come on. What did you study today, you know? Yeah. And then you look in the book and you ask them a question. Yeah. And so you know if, they're, if they're advancing or not advancing. Exactly. Exactly. Because, uh, I mean, and I would assume that um, uh, Brother Muhammad's kids, for instance, uh, um, uh, if he says, um, uh, uh, to, if he's talking to them and says Prophet Muhammad, they would automatically go Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So, so <laughs> he, he would know that that y you know things are moving on. Uh, oh yeah, on the right track, and they might even tell him about a story. For instance, the Hijra story. Or the, yeah. when you, mm. you know, when I look at these coming from America, mm. okay, where it's big on academics, but you know, Islam is coming along. You know, it's not like here in the East. Mashallah, when I look at these kids, you know, I'll mention something and they'll just begin to recite Quran. Mm. I mean, these are my six year old right, and yeah, students, yeah. you know, and they'll, you know, yes, yes, mister. And they'll, you know, I know that, I know says, that. Yeah, you know, yeah. And then they'll recite Quran mm. so beautifully, mashallah. Mm. So this is something um, 
I, I see the young ones, with, they love to show what they've learned. Mm. So even the Islamic studies... Well, what's the best age for memorizing Quran, by the way, as far as you I are, think you should start you as know. soon as they can um, start talking. Mm, <laughs> and before then, mm. play Quran for... I have a little mm. uh, son, he's like one and a half now. Mm. You know, he's just... He's starting to talk Mashallah. and stuff. And he responds, he listens to Quran. He tries to... Uh, <laughs> he tries to read some Quran. He Mashallah. says, you know, little... Mashallah, I want to say yeah. Mashallah, you know. Exactly. Um, he tries to say little things from Quran, and so and it's, you know, also be, it's <laughs> also usually beautiful if you have a a, a very young kid, and uh, you know that they can't read or write at, at the moment, yeah, no. but they memorize a certain surah, and so they open the Quran and they tell you, "Hey, where is Surah Qul Huwa Allahu Ahad?" They, they, <laughs> as if they are reading. It. Look at Bakr, yeah, they're exactly. Like, <laughs> they're just memorizing it. It's so beautiful, it's, man. Yeah. So I mean, I would say you know. Just play Quran, recite Quran, even mm. like encourage the mother when when mm. the baby is in the stomach to mm. let her recite Quran. She should mm. recite Quran, and then when they come out, play Quran for them, and mm. you know it becomes something that they like and that is beautiful for them. Mm. And uh, so I don't think there's an age to start. I think you know as soon as possible. Right, uh, brother Absalam. As we wind up here, the motivation. I mean, how do uh, uh, the, the punishments uh, uh, and the rewards. The uh, how do we go about that? Should the reward, for instance, for a good report card or good grades, uh, uh, be um, uh, gifts, be a trip, be uh, uh, um, uh, you know um, taking them out? Uh, 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 and, and should the punishment be preventing them from playing the sport they like or watching TV? Uh, uh, um, or could this backfire uh, on both uh, uh, roads? Yeah, um, I think we definitely should give them um, rewards um, for doing their best to motivate them. You know, you can give a pin, a pin, just a little mm. pin, a four-color pin or something, mm. just to say, you know, to show them. And, and when I say rewards, even rewards can backfire. Of course, obviously, well, yeah, obviously to, punishments can yeah, backfire. But you have to put them in the right but place. Even, yeah, but even rewards, uh, sometimes you, you find the kids, you know, it gets so it greedy, gets yes. <laughs> yeah. So I, yeah, I did good. I want to get. And right they want to the reward each and every day. <laughs> yeah, no, no. So. You have to, you know, gauge it, and you know, mm. you you also, I mean, like if you have a child, they didn't do their homework, um, they weren't trying, they weren't taking it seriously, and then they get a bad grade. It's like you know, you shouldn't be surprised. Yeah, yeah, and you shouldn't be surprised, and you say, okay, well, you know, they should get some kind of, you know, punishment. Yeah, sure. That's anything severe, mm. but let them know that you're displeased. Mm. You know, and at the same time, um, if the child is doing well, you give them, you know, you can do something small for them, mm. something mm. unusual that they never usually do. You know, mm. you take them out to a restaurant or something mm. like that, mm. and. Um, but you agree that you shouldn't overdo it. Yeah, you shouldn't overdo Even it. Even like rewards. Yeah, yeah. Mm. I mean, because mm. um, the reward is doing well. Mm. But you should show them, but you should not overdo it, mm. you know. Mm. Um, and inshallah, when they, uh, you know, you find that education, alhamdulillah, uh, the way the system of the world allows me, the system of the world, the ones, mm. many people who get education, Allah opens a knowledge, you know, Allah opens many doors for them. Mm. So you can give the child a taste of that, you know, if they do well, you, you know, mm. you take them out or you cook a nice the dinner that they like or give mm. them a little gift. Mm. And at the same time, if they do bad, and don't be too hard on them, mm. but do let them know that you are displeased mm. and encourage them. Mm. encourage them to mm. and let them you know during the time that they're studying is the time because afterward it's you know F final question uh, usually you have at home as a, um, a stricter parent with the kids a stricter father or a stricter mother so uh, how would you uh, uh, um, uh, advise on the distribution of roles when it comes to kids studying mm. you have to be unified Mm. The parents, inshallah, if both the parents are home and, you know, uh, in the home, they have to be unified. Mm. You know, they have to talk beforehand because if you say, you know, you must do this or if you become strict, then automatically the child is going to look at the other parent to see, mm. is this parent, uh, you know, it's going to try to find that mm. open door and escape and go play. Mm. So they have to be unified and work together mm. and have a plan and make sure that, the, you know, the child is getting the, you know, the benefit out of their educational program. Barakallah feekum, brother. 
Thank you very much, Brother Abdul Salam Abdul Khabir, uh, teacher, uh, class teacher at an Islamic school he here in Egypt. Uh, uh, Brother Abdul Salam is uh, an American uh, 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 from uh, Chicago, uh, uh, um, whom we are lucky to have here uh, uh, in Egypt. Thank you very much, Brother Abdul Salam, uh, uh, for joining us. Jazakumullah khairan. Wishing to see you again, uh, inshallah. Thank you, brothers and sisters, for uh, choosing this topic. Uh, and thank you for watching our program. Make sure to catch us again same time next week, inshallah. And please do keep your suggestions flowing at our, um, uh, to our emails, uh, uh, email addresses, uh, uh, family issues at huda, uh, dot, uh, TV and also our Facebook um, uh, uh, account uh, because we will be continuing to uh, filter uh, uh, out the ideas you're, you're sending to us and, and, and uh, uh, choose the best um, uh, of them here and uh, see the most redundant uh, uh, of them uh, to, to, to choose them uh, um, to become our main topics. Thank you for watching Family issue Issues. Until we meet again next week, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Prepare for your future, but knowing nothing's gonna last. You see, this life is but a road, a straight and narrow path to our final abode. So travel well, O oh Muslim, and paradise will be your home. And always remember. That you are never alone